Well, I've been given the assignment to sound an alarm tonight to give a wake-up call to holiness. I said I've been given an assignment to sound an alarm to give a wake-up call to holiness. I've been given the assignment to make a wake-up call for holiness. God laid on my heart this morning that the church needs a wake-up call to that Word. Because we're playing church and not praying in church. Because we may be giving God an occasional Sunday or Wednesday, but that's it. We may give just a little token prayer. Maybe raise a hand or two on a Sunday. But become a different person when we get home. Faithfulness and righteousness are words that carry little meaning anymore. Honoring God and revering Him seems old school. A thing of the past. We hear sermons on forgiveness and do nothing about it. We throw a couple of Christianese words out there that sound a little churchy. But man, when we get back to that job, we've got a different vocabulary. And this is what I believe with everything within me. That if we are not careful, the next generation will only know a God via maybe a TV or a device. And to them, it may look like a reality show. Because we got a little bit of music and we got a little bit of words being spoken. Are y'all following me where I'm going with this? Amen. I'm sounding an alarm to give us, the church, a wake up call to holiness. Because what I believe is the greatest trap by Satan is called compromise. And let me show you in the Bible where I believe we see the best example of compromise. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 19 through 20. It says this, But the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Then we will be like everybody else. We will be like every other nation with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. I believe what's happening in our country, in our world, is that compromise has leaked in to the front door and through the back door and has caused people to no longer have a passion for holiness. All they know is the God of maybe or Jesus of their childhood by maybe a painting on a wall of him holding a little lamb. And that's it. Maybe they grew up with stained glass windows with a little halo in their church. Their view of Jesus is nothing more than a sculpture. A side note, Michelle and I went to Rome, Italy a few years ago, and we actually went through and took a tour of the Vatican. It has some of the world's most prized art that you have ever put your eyes on. It was breathtaking and amazing, but at the same time, all of their stock is in 
tapestries and sculptures and paintings. Oh, my goodness. My prayer is that God does not become a watered down God in a painting on a wall. That people grab hold to what I'm saying tonight. They grab hold to His holiness. And not just an occasional visit to church. Amen? And I want to share with you what I believe is the greatest example of God's holiness in all the Bible. And it's found in Isaiah. It's a wonderful, wonderful picture of His amazing holiness. And it goes something like this. It was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. This is Uzi uh, Isaiah speaking. He was sitting on a lofty throne. And the train of his robe filled the temple. What Isaiah saw was not God sitting on a chair on a stage. It said that his train, his robe, filled the entire temple from top to bottom and from side to side. It wasn't a train that just went to his ankles. It filled the entire room. That's what he saw. And then he goes on to say, Attending him were mighty seraphim or angels, each having six wings. Two wings that covered their faces because of the glory of the holiness of the one we call Almighty was so bright. He, the, 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 the angel had to have two wings over his eyes. Are you getting the picture of the holiness of God? With two, they covered their feet. And the other two, it says, they flew. And they were calling out to each other, one angel to another angel, with their faces blocked with their wings. This is what Isaiah saw. And this is what they said. One said to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with His glory. That's what they were shouting and what Isaiah saw. Then it says in verse 4, their voices shook the temple to its foundations and the entire building was filled with smoke. Are you getting the picture of God's greatness and holiness? And we think Him in a painting with a little lamb is all we get. But His love is so majestic and so large and so wonderful. I don't want us to lose to the next generation what Isaiah saw. Amen? And then I said, this is Isaiah speaking. He says, oh, it's all over. I am doomed for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord of heaven's armies. He was so taken back by the enormity of what he saw in this vision. And he's like, oh my gosh. God is... It's so wonderful, and here I am, unworthy to even take a peek at who He is. And then look what happens. Then one of the seraphim or angels flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with it and said, See, this coal has touched your lips.
Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. That's the holiness of God. Amen? If there's anything that you get here tonight is that He is holy, He is holy, He is holy. And any feelings of unworthiness, your lips have been touched by the coals of Jesus. And your sins have been forgiven and all of your guilt and shame has been removed. I think that's a great place to say amen. Amen. Then I heard the Lord asking, whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? In other words, who's going to take to the people of my holiness? And look what Isaiah, once he learned that his sins had been forgiven and his guilt was removed, he said, Lord, here I am, send me, 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 take me, take me, pick me, pick me. I want to go to the crowds. I want to go to the people to share of your goodness and your holiness. Are y'all getting this tonight? I think it is the best description of God's holiness in all the Bible. And then... With that said, God takes it a step further for us. Some of you might remember, you might be old enough to remember Paul Harvey. The rest of the story. Because in 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Wait a minute, Rob. We're called to holiness? Yeah, Rob, you know, they, the Bible talks about lifting holy hands, uh, holy ground, holy cities, holy nations. But me, holy Holiness has become to a lot of people a word that is unattainable. We got to be perfect. In fact, it usually leads to perfectionism and legalism. Often it's a, a trait or an attribute of, of what we think is only God and Jesus, but not us. Some will say that holiness is outdated. It's old-fashioned. Because things have changed. Well, Rob, what if I mess up? Do I have to start over? Or is this like the stock exchange? One day it's up, the next day it's down, and then how do I know where I, where I rate? And so I ask you a question. Is holiness attainable for us? Is being holy even possible for us? And this is right here. This is where everyone who struggles with unworthiness gets hung up. Right here at this word of holiness. Because the moment we walk into a church Immediately we go to comparison and intimidation and we say, oh, the person in front of me is more holy than me. Has anybody in here ever felt that? Or am I the only one? I used to walk and Michelle and I used to sit right here and I, I, I struggled with comparison and intimidation for years. Because I would walk by and see somebody's Bible all highlighted. And there was clear packaging tape holding the binding together. And mine looked like it had never been opened. 
I struggled for years. I didn't want to sit by anybody who had a highlighter because they were marking up their Bible because I thought they were more holy than me. Does anybody feel or felt that way ever? Oh, my goodness, did I struggle for years. Feeling that I would never make it to where they were. They were clearly more holy than me. They had it all together, not me. Let me tell you this, regardless of how we may feel, the New Testament believers were often referred to as holy. Which means that holiness should be a central part of our lives today. That's another good place to say amen. So how do we get past this immense pressure of having to become, to overcome this legalistic, perfectionist kind of mentality? Just go back to what happened to Isaiah in verse 7. The angel said, see this coal? It's going to touch your lips. And because of the name of Christ, your guilt has been removed and your sins have been forgiven. It's as simple as that. The word holiness means set apart. It means different. I don't know if you know this or not, but you're different. I'm different. If you're a born again believer, you have been set apart. What was that comment? Being different, being different, being different, being set apart to not just do the work of the ministry, but set apart to be a holy people, a holy man, a holy woman, a holy child. Let me tell you this, if God wanted you to be perfect, he would have created you that way. But I got to share what Mother Teresa once said. Holiness is not a luxury for the few. It is not for just some people. It is meant for all of us. She goes on to say it is a simple duty because if we learn to love, we learn to be holy. Let me give you a couple what I believe are just keys to working on and pursuing holiness. Can, can we talk about that? Tonight we're going to dispel all unworthiness because God showed me this morning that there are going to be some people in here and watching online that really get hung up on this word holy and holiness. And I believe tonight you will be set free for the rest of your life. And you will not look at holiness as something that can never be reached. But you can look at it as I'm working on holiness. Amen. So key number one is this. You got to realize it's a joint venture when we talk about holiness. It's a joint venture between God and us, between our Savior and us. Yes, we need to work out our salvation. We need to work at doing good. We need to work at loving and, and whatnot, right? But the operation of the Holy Spirit in us is what helps us move in a direction towards being holy. I, I, I got to ask, is, is talking about holiness okay in church? I 
I don't know if you realize, but every Sunday and every Wednesday, every Bible study is geared towards us being holy. Yeah, the topic may change from week to week, right? But it's about being holy. Not being good or your best effort. But about being holy, walking in holiness. Let me tell you this. God will not force us to be holy. He gives us opportunities for us to walk in it. Amen. He gives us that responsibility. In 1 Peter 3.15, it says this. But in your hearts, you see, that's where it begins, that joint venture. Right here, in your heart is where it begins. He says, set Christ apart as holy. You see, if we're going to walk in holiness, we've got to understand that He is holy, and we've got to acknowledge Him. Look what it says, acknowledging Him, giving Him first place in our lives. Just to let you know, your job is not first place. Just to let you know, your marriage is not first place. Your, your finances are not first place. Your blog is not first place. Putting Him first in everything in your life. That's where holiness has to begin. It becomes a joint venture. Amen. It's not you alone. It's Christ helping you put Him first in all that you do. Right? Even in your taxes, which are due. Coming up in a couple weeks, right? Didn't get an amen there. You have been set apart to love God and to do what He wants by placing Him first in every avenue of your life. By your words that you say, by your actions that you partake in. I'm not here tonight to condemn or to point the finger. I said it from the very beginning. God gave me an assignment to give you, give us a wake up call, me included. Amen. Because I have been totally convicted by this. Number two, we've got to realize that holiness, it, it's a continual process. We can't just flip on a switch, right? Would you all agree? We're commanded to avoid the ways we practice before becoming a Christian. But I believe in, in my heart the best way to keep this continual process going is His Word. Now listen, can we just be honest and transparent? All of us, some of us, struggle with reading God's Word. And you may hear it in sermons, you got to read God's Word, you got to read God's Word. For years, I was intimidated and I compared because I could not read God's Word. And one of the things that I was told growing up in another denomination by the minister was that God's Word could not be read by the common people. And God alerted me one day and I got that stinking spirit broken off of me. And it started me on a process of reading and comprehending what I was reading. Oh, I was reading, but it, it was just here and it wasn't making its way. It was getting lost in this 18 inch distance. And, and let me just offer this to you. Michelle can tell you, I love reading God's Word. 
You can take my house. You can take my guns. You can take my lawnmower. But don't take my Bible because I will fight you tooth and nail. Amen. You can't have my Bible. You're not getting it. That's how much I devour and go after God's word. But I, I wasn't like that all the time. And I struggled so much because I was just reading the check off. Did you know that most of the Bible is meant for our application in our life? Amen. Like it says in James, those of you that are married. How many of you are married? Come on. Brian, raise your hand, brother. Okay. I was a little concerned. <laughs> little concerned. <laughs> Sherry's like, I'm married. Brian's like, I don't know if I am. No, anyway. I pick on Brian. I picked on him today. <laughs> oh, help me, Jesus. I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> James, for those of you that are married, the verse says, be quick to listen and slow to speak. We flip that around. And we're quick to speak and slow to listen. You see, that right there is application for you, for you, for you, for you. That's what I'm talking about, about application of God's word. Don't get hung up on all the big words and all the big names that are about that long. What you should get hung up on is putting your face in his book, not on Facebook, but your face in his book and getting his word in you and allowing his word to become a part of you and go, oh, I've, I've never seen. This. I've read Isaiah a few times. I've never seen this until this morning. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's Lord, that's what you hope. That's it. That's what I want to use today, tonight. That's how God works. Amen. So I believe this continual process has to include his word. Amen. If you have problems, call me. I would love to spend some time with you on how to overcome some things about reading God's Word. And do not let, I can't read, become a crutch. You can get it on audio as well. Amen. But it's about seeing His Word come alive in you. Speaking of continual process, in 2 Timothy 3.14, it says this, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it. Michelle and I have been at this church for, I don't know, 27 years. We'll listen to a thousands and thousands and hundreds and sermons. Amen. I have not stopped learning about me, about me, about me. And we have to continue in that process to learn what it means to be holy and how our holiness can come out. Amen. You're not only set apart in a joint venture, but you're set apart to continue because God is trying to get results out of us. Amen? Listen, there are no shortcuts to holiness. It requires some work, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. And i got to throw in a little, uh, what do you call it, a footnote? What are those things at the bottom of the page? A footnote. We all grow at different rates, different speeds, and we're all at different places in our spiritual growth. Would you agree? So 
please do not let the intimidation of others because they might pray better or they might read their Bible better. If you let the spirit of comparison eat you alive, you're not going to get this message. You're not going to understand. God has called us to be holy. Amen. And finally, number three. We got to realize it's a daily walk. It's a daily commitment. Because spiritual results require spiritual work. And a lot of people put all their stock in on coming on a Wednesday or a Sunday, and that's it. That's the wrong mindset right there. Church should just be a supplement to what you're already doing at home. It got real quiet. Are you all on track with me? Are you following what I'm saying? It requires diligence. Don't give me work schedule excuses. I'm meddling now. My name's Rob and I'm a meddler. Holiness will not come automatically. We have to put forth some effort. Amen. Proverbs 14, 23 says this, all hard work brings a profit. Profit in the business world is good, isn't it? How many of you are business owners? Let me see. Profit's good, right? It means you're doing something right. Profit in His Word and in holiness brings forth such life into each of us. And let me just say this, the Holy Spirit will develop within you once you begin the process of getting into His Word and let His Word speak to you. And the next thing you know, you and your wife are on the same page. And the next thing you know, you and your wife are praying together. That's a miracle right there. Amen? Next thing you know, you're reading your Bible together. That's an amen. But the Holy Spirit will work in you, within you, and through you to help you grow in this area of holiness. The Bible calls him a teacher. He's the best teacher that I know. Uh oh, I lost my place. It's about obeying his word, it's about doing. Not things right, but doing the right things all the time. Does that make sense? Now listen, it, it, you, you got to start somewhere. Don't try to go to a fire hydrant and get a little cup of water because that ain't going to happen. You just got to start off a, a little bit at a time. You know, if you've got an issue maybe with anger, like flying off the handle really quick, hello, just say, Holy Spirit, teach me how to be holy in this area. And then the next time a conversation begins and you're about to erupt and the Holy Spirit gives you one of those slaps in the head and you watch your wife go, you're not being angry anymore. What's up? Hey, that's the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. God's holiness. Amen. By taking it a day at a time, we begin to eliminate those things that have made us unholy. Does that make sense? And you just take it a step at a time. And, and the problem is, is that people are coming to churches feeling so overwhelmed of having to get everything just right. And God says, and Jesus says, just, just come on in. And, and, and have a seat right here. In, in our new chair. On our new carpet. Doesn't it look nice? Jesus says, come on in and enjoy. 
And the Holy Spirit is saying, I, I want to just simply teach you some things of how to be holy. But we got to get at it on a daily basis. Amen. It can't be a just a once a week Sunday attendance kind of thing. Amen. I'm not trying to condemn. I'm not trying to. But I just felt like I got to sound that alarm tonight. Because if we don't, the next generation is going to slip and fall and slip and fall and they will not have any example to look at. Paul said, be imitators. Be imitators of me. We have to practice the walk of holiness. Amen. But it just can't be at church when everybody does this and go, hallelujah. How are you, brother? Oh, I'm fine. But when you go to work on Monday, your employees are like, wait a minute. Man, I went to church on, on Sunday and I saw you, but on Monday is kind of a little different. You know what I'm saying? Are y'all good with this tonight? It's just a gut check for me, and, and I just had to share what was on my heart to you. In no way is it condemning. It's just saying we all have to work on holiness. And we have to remember it was because of the coals of that angel on Isaiah's lips. He was in a vision. He got revelation. That his unworthiness got broken off of his life. And now he sees the God of the armies and how magnificent he is. And he's no longer hanging on a picture in a hallway of a church with a little lamb in his arms. But we see him as the majestic Holy One who has this place called earth in the palms of his hands. You and I, I believe, have some work to do. Amen? If you would, please stand with me. I just want you to bow your head. I'm going to ask you to do something extremely bold tonight. <clears throat> and I'm going to ask the pastors, I'm going to ask Michelle, anybody that's on our prayer team to come up, come up to the altar right now. If anybody has been struggling with unworthiness and feeling that you can never attain holiness, I want you to come down right now I want you to come down and get prayed for right now. If you have that feeling of unworthiness that needs to be broken off of your life, don't let this night escape you before leaving. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you open up the hearts and the minds of your people that they will not see themselves as unholy, but they will see themselves as working on their holiness. Lord, I pray that you help anyone. Anyone in here feeling unworthy? Let me see, where are your hands? Raise your hands, let me see. Come on down, ma'am, Let, let's pray. Anybody else? Come on down, sir. Let somebody pray for you. Come on. Anybody else feeling unworthy that you can never attain this concept of holiness? Let someone pray for you. Maybe it was spoken over you at an early age. Maybe you've been dealing with unworthiness for a very long time. Tonight is your night to get delivered from unworthiness. Come on down. Thank you, ma'am, for being bold. Thank you, ma'am, for being bold. Let someone pray for you and break this unworthiness spirit off of you. 
because the coals of the fire are touching your lips tonight because your sins have been forgiven your shame has been taken away righteousness shall be yours father right now in the name of jesus we declare lord that we will strive to get on a path of holiness lord we pray that tonight you will help us we understand that it's got a joint venture lord we understand and realize that it's a continual process and also lord that it is a daily walk i pray that right now lord your spirit is alive and well anybody have trouble reading god's word i want you to come on down anybody that has trouble reading i want to specifically pray for you and pray that god would break that spirit of intimidation off of you if you have trouble reading your bible just raise your hand so that i can pray and i'm going to pray a, a carpet prayer over each one of you in the anybody else that has trouble reading their bible come on down hallelujah in fact do me a favor you uh four if you could come over here to scotty i'm going to pray for y'all if you have trouble reading your bible i want to lay hands on every one of you and declare god's goodness that he's opening up his word so that you can see yourself as holy and not unholy father i declare that your goodness is over these people right now in jesus name that you are breaking unworthiness you are breaking lord the spirit that has been holding them back that they will see themselves as being holy lord your word says be holy as you are holy and so lord i declare your goodness to be over this congregation tonight may the spirit of holiness take root in our lives may the spirit of holiness come alive in us like never before may lord we take that leap of faith and not lord leave the next generation faithless but lord that they will see us as being faithful Lord, I thank you for tonight. I thank you that the Word of God is truth. The Word of God is helping us. And the Word of God is putting on a path, putting us on a path of holiness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Where you guys are dismissed as I pray for these people.